Hey guys, Viking545 here. Um, I'm just going to make a short video uh, talking about getting in your cellar and picking up those tins that you just did not um, like the, the, your, the first time you smoked them or they just uh, didn't offer the experience that you were expecting. Over the few weeks here, uh, I've been getting in my cellar and opening uh, my cellared mason jars. You know, they're the the mason jars that I put in a tobacco that I smoked maybe a few bowls through, and I just did not find enjoyment out of them, or they just something was lacking in the blend. Um, a few of them have been aging, you know, about uh, a year and a few months. And uh, I also have a tin here that is also about a year and a half, if not older, um, that was not put in a mason jar, but it still is good consistency and is still smokable. I'm actually smoking one of those blends in my El Seppo. And it's my horn shape here. And in it, I'm smoking Frogmorin on the Town. Okay, now this was one of my very first English blends. And I bought this uh, blend. You know, because the Frog Morton series is so very popular. But also because Laughter 1099, also known as uh, VSL David, uh, he smoked this a lot. Okay, now when I first smoked this, take in mind that I was an early pipe smoker. About, you know, a year and a half, two years ago. Uh, it just didn't do much for me. Okay, so I just... Shoved this away on my shelf and forgot about it. And uh, just the other week, I s opened it up again and I've been smoking through it and I've fallen in love with it. And also, that brings up another point that I want to, you know, uh, get across is that pick up those pipes that you don't go for all the time. Now this pipe, uh, it's not my traditional pipe that I would go for and buy, but the grain was, you know, so, you know, so outstanding and I didn't have a, hor a horn shape in my collection. Um, basically this pipe just sits on my rack and I love having it because it is unique, but I picked this up as well and I've fallen in love with it all over again. And another blend that I have also started smoking is Commonwealth. All right, and I've had this uh, uh, mason jar here filled with Commonwealth for about uh, six months or so. And my first impressions of the blend was a little bit too bland. Uh, the Latakia there wasn't um, as much as I was hoping for. Uh, very, you know, mild blend. So I stuck in a mason jar and put it away and... I haven't touched it for a while and just picked it up and it opened my eyes that this blend is a very very good blend although it is a 50 50 blend of uh, Virginia and Latakia um, you do get 
the Latakia. It is a good, uh, you know, burst of Latakia, you know, if it, for you English, English smokers. And uh, you also get a subtle tint of the, the sweetness from the Virginias. And that usually actually comes near the end of the bowl, which is uh, surprising. Uh, the, the smoke is extremely smooth, which I like. Um, I actually kind of compare this to uh, Sam Gao's Balkan Flake, which is uh, one of my current favorites. Uh, the, the smoke is just, uh, you know, so, so rich and smooth. And uh, it's uh, a very easy, easy to smoke. And it can definitely be an all-day smoke. And one of my utmost treasures that I have uh, opened here in the, the last week or last two weeks or so is Aaron Moore Flake. Okay, and uh, you know, all of you know uh, Aaron Moore and uh, Aaron Moore Flake. Uh, I got this tin out of uh, the rave reviews and you know, everyone's, you know, gotta try Aaron Moore for, you know, at least once. So I got a tin. I smoked, it looks about half a tin, and it, it just wasn't for me. You know, I usually don't go for uh, those <coughs> uh, blends that are heavily cased, although this is mildly cased, but uh, it has that uh, fruity um, casing. But uh, I opened this up a few weeks ago, and it is awesome. And uh, I think I'm going to buy a, a fresh tin and compare the two to see if the age was actually a factor in it or my tastes have changed. Um, another one is Sam Miguel's Westmoreland. Um, I got this during uh, Commonwealth and although this was on the very bottom tier of the Galwith blends that I have tried, um, I recently have smoked it, and although not, definitely not my favorite blend, but uh, it, it, it is, you know, getting up there uh, much, much more than my first few smokes of this blend. Um, and to come to find out that this actually has a Tonkin, Tonkin bean in it, or Tonkin flavoring, which is the same flavoring in 1792 that I, uh, I talked to talk about in a, a previous video that I did. So I'm sure that this um, will come around and you know I'll start to like it again. And also probably in the next three weeks or so I'm going to be opening up um, this tin here of three fryers. Uh, this has been aging since January 7th. Um, and I remember smoking my first bowls of this and just was not impressed. Again, this was when I was, you know, a new new pipe smoker. So, you know, take that with a grain of salt. <laughs> um, but I'm going to be opening this. And I know that they talk about this being kind of a, a match to Three Nuns. Um, although the, the reviews of don't really give it that justice. <laughs> to say the least. So, watching this video, I hope that uh, you go to your cellar and pick up a tin that you haven't smoked for a long time or your your thoughts of that tin is just, um, you know, very low. And also, I recommend picking up a pipe that you don't necessarily uh, go for and grab when you... Uh, want you want to smoke and I'm sure out of the tins that you uh, grab that you will definitely find um, you know a jewel and that you'll be rewarded in doing so and also don't be afraid of opening those uh, cellar tins of mason jars that have been aging for a year and a half two years you know uh, I'm sure that if you open it you'll be rewarded greatly and if not you know the worst comes to shove that you just 
seal it back up and forget about it for another two years. So um, get out there and enjoy your smoke and have a good night.